The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You may be seated. Today, the good news is when we feel low or insecure, or afraid, we can turn to God because we know that God is for the lowly. And one of the most powerful means God has given us for turning to him is in our, lowly, in our lowliness is through song. Have you ever seen a blowfish or a puffer fish? Blowfish essentially look like a regular fish, but will puff up to twice or more their size. They do this as a defense mechanism to make themselves big if they are threatened. Biologists think blowfish develop their famous inflatability because their slow, somewhat clumsy swimming style makes them vulnerable to predators. In lieu of escape, the pufferfish use their highly elastic stomachs and the ability to quickly ingest huge amounts of water and air if necessary, to turn themselves into a virtually inedible ball several times their normal size. Some species also have spines similar to a porcupine, and this makes them less palatable. For the purpose of this sermon, we will understand it to mean that when a blowfish makes itself big, it is living a lie or denying reality. We're going to accept the reality that your mic's not working. I recently had a day when I felt like a blowfish. Have you ever felt this way? I didn't sleep well the night before. I wasn't able to get my early morning run in. My coffee was not just right. Work was stressful, and my patients were fussy. This was not a good combination. All the things I have in place, sleeping, running, coffee, these things insulate myself and make me feel better were not available to me that day. I was done. In my vulnerability of needing sleep, coffee, and nice patients, the only thing I felt I could do was to make myself big, to puff up. The result was that I spent the day in a defensive stance, making myself big in order to fight off these so-called predators. 
We often do this. We are all vulnerable by nature of being human, and we tend to compensate for it by being a blowfish in a variety of ways. In the moment, it might be being defensive. In bigger picture stuff, it might be by gambling away what's left in the checking account. However, this is the wrong plan. Instead, God wants us to turn to him. So when we feel low or insecure or afraid, we can turn to God because we know that God is for the lowly. And one of the most powerful means God has given us for turning to him in our lowliness is through song. Let's look at our scripture from today. We see someone who is not at the top of the world, and yet God shows her favor and blesses her because God is for the lowly. James 4.10 says, Humble yourself before the Lord, and he will lift you up. When do you feel lowly? The good news is, when we do feel low, insecure, afraid, or sad, we can turn to God, because we know that God is for the lowly. Mary was lowly. She was lowly in status, power, and riches. Mary was invisible in her culture, She was a 13 or 14 year old nobody, a peasant girl who would have been at the very bottom of social hierarchy. She was not from a well-to-do family. In fact, her family origin is not even mentioned in scripture. Yet God singled her out to be the mother of Jesus. He could have chosen anybody to have the son of God, but he chose her. Mary was a faithful person, and she was not expecting God to show up. He just did. In the first portion of our lesson today, Mary goes and visits her cousin Elizabeth. Verse 39 says, At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. We would have learned earlier from Luke that Elizabeth had been barren for many years. But at her mature age, God miraculously gave her a child that would be John the Baptist. But unlike Mary, Elizabeth is a person of means. She and her husband Zechariah, who was a priest, were from the priestly line of Aaron, the brother of Moses. Luke tells us that Zechariah and Elizabeth were both righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments of the Lord. Their consistent devotion to God was a way of life. And yet, look at what happens at this interaction between Mary and Elizabeth. Elizabeth greets Mary and immediately prophesies over her cousin, who is about 30 years younger, by saying, Blessed be the fruit of your womb. The contrast to Mary being lowly is that Elizabeth is her superior in every cultural way. Mary shows up at Elizabeth's, and Elizabeth prophetically exalts Mary by saying, I've got John the Baptist, but you've got Jesus. Everybody feels lowly in some ways. It's a choice of, are we we going to blow ourselves up like a blowfish on our own power to try to compensate for our lowliness, or are we going to turn to God? If we do turn to God in our lowliness, This is the type of God we are turning to, one who comes to us. So we can turn to God because we know that God is for the lowly, and one of the most powerful means God has given us for turning to him in our lowliness is through song. Luke goes on to tell us in the second portion that Mary's response to Elizabeth's prophecy was to sing the praises of God because God had exalted her. In other words, she's received the blessing of becoming the mother of Jesus, and she praises God for it. The lyrics to her song say, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon the lowly estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed, for he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown the strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. 
He has filled the hungry with good things. The rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, Abraham and to his offspring forever. In verses 46 and 40 through 49, Mary sings of what God has done for her. And verses 54 and 55 mirror what God has done for Israel. Like any good song, she has repeated words, phrases, and images that pop up again and again, which all revolve around the central chorus of verse 39. He who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Just because Mary knows she's going to have the Son of God does not mean her life is going to be easy moving forward from the Magnificat. God is asking Mary to do something extremely difficult, and she has a dangerous road ahead. People will eventually see that she's pregnant. These people will not call her exalted titles such as Queen of Heaven or Mother of Christ. No, they will heap scorn on her or stone her in the streets. But Mary knew the consequences of saying yes when she acknowledged that she was the Lord's servant in verse 38. The real gift in Mary's Magnificat is that it is drawn from the Old Testament. How could Mary have written this? Did she come up with it off the top of her head? Mary had been taught from the Torah. She regularly participated in singing the psalm as was the practice of her people. Perhaps she'd be singing today's appointed psalm. Restore us again, O God. Show us the light of your countenance, and we shall be whole. Mary knew about Abraham, Abraham's wife, Sarah, her miraculous conception and birth of Isaac at the age of 90. And Mary may have memorized Hannah's prayer. Mary knew deep in her heart that God had a special heart for the lowly. And what solidified it was the witness of lessons and songs of the past, of people praising God for his mightiness despite their lowliness. Having this in her back pocket would have carried her through the tough and uncertain times of her life. Isn't it cool to imagine that Mary would have sung the song she knew that recounted the history of Israel as she rocked the baby Jesus to sleep? The Magnificat teaches us that there is power in singing praise to God because when we feel low or insecure, afraid or sad, we can turn to God because we know that God is for the lowly. And one of the most powerful means God has given us for turning to him is through song. Songs are powerful. Luke's gospel is full of them. After Mary's song, Zechariah will take the stage to praise God for keeping his promise to Israel through the birth of John the Baptist. Next, the angels will offer the canticle of peace and goodwill at the birth of Jesus, and Simeon will croon of God's mercy being extended throughout the world. Songs have the power to lift us up as well as bring us down. Songs are attached to our, mem our memories. We burst out singing in our cars when our favorite song comes on the radio. And we cry a tear or two when a song reminds us of someone we love or of a sad or challenging time in our life. Songs have the potential to help us cope with physical and emotional pain. But we forget, don't we, that we have this gift of, this, of song. I must, for, I must confess that I forgot about the uplifting results of singing that day when I felt like a blowfish. But Mary's Magnificat now ministers to me in my lowliness. Her acknowledgement of a great God coming to her is a reminder that God comes to us, loves all of us, and will exalt all of us. Instead of blowfishing myself, I am magnifying the one who is truly great and invulnerable. In doing so, I am open my, opening myself to him. When we accept our lowliness and God's greatness, it is a true cause for rejoicing. And one way to rejoice is to sing, whether or not we have a good voice or can sing on key. 
What am I saying with all of this? Well, number one, we are all vulnerable by nature of being human. We wake up in the morning and we are vulnerable as simply as our eyes to the sun and our body to the cold. And number two, just like Mary, we can believe that God is for the lowly. And what will solidify it is the witness of lessons and songs of the past, of people praising God for their mightiness, for his mightiness. Anglican priest Tish Warren Harris explains that Christianity does not give us a concise explanation for vulnerability. But what it gives us is a historical presentation in the word of God that will carry us through the tough and uncertain times in our lives. She, she continues by saying, mysteriously, God does not take away our vulnerability. Instead, he enters it. This is the type of God we're turning to in our lowliness, one who enters it. And one of the most powerful means God has given to us for turning to him in our lowliness is through song. Today, I invite us all once again to consider where we feel insecure or low or, or insignificant. Maybe we don't want to admit our lowliness, and that's okay. Maybe you're on the fence about whether or not singing will move the needle when you feel blowfishy. Maybe you wonder if singing can be a way of participating in living a lifestyle of repentance. Well, as we've heard today, the Magnificat, the song Mary sings after God comes to her, teaches us that there is power in singing praise to God. So together in our lowliness, let's take our cue from Mary and respond to the Lord in song. Please rise as we sing, Sing Out All God's People. <laughs> 